it is finally here and that is the earth one plant sensor so if you're a beginner plant person whether you're growing um vegetables indoors or doing house plants indoors you need this absolutely need this it's gonna be a game changer for you but if you are a seasoned veteran when it comes to growing this i helped design this so <laughs> There's a lot of science, a lot of data in here to help you even just determine what room is best for which plants. And that's the intended use of this device for me personally, is in particular looking at the environment or the ecosystem in which my plants exist, which this will allow me to do that because it doesn't just do plant specific metrics, it also does ambient metrics as well. So I could put one of these in my classic winter filming room, my plant room. I could put one of these in my living room. I have one out on my patio here, which they're not necessarily weatherproof and it's not recommended to do that. However, this is sheltered and it's right next to a Wi-Fi connection, which is super duper important. Now, first impressions of the packaging is that it is absolutely gorgeous compared to what we had before. Uh, the actual sensors are nicely cushioned, so there's no snapping or breaking or humidity coming up inside the packaging because it also has that foam pad. The packaging also is super eco-friendly. So for the four pack, a two pack, a one pack, we actually use the same packaging for all of them and this helps reduce our waste and our obvious footprint. Now, for those of you that were in the pilot project, your new dudes either have arrived already or are arriving very, very soon. Those of you overseas, it can take three weeks, it's looking like, just because Canada Post is not the greatest, but in Canada, you guys should have already gotten these or you will be getting them very, very soon. So the one thing I hated about this device or the, whatever the trial run was, was the way to connect it. So this one is way easier. All you're gonna do is simply push on this little front button. And by push, I mean like touch it. It's like a touch screen. It's not like push in, it's just nice gentle little tap and a little orange light is going to turn on this means your device is on and you can now connect it through the app and you just follow the instructions on the app and it does all the work for you the one thing i will say is the bluetooth connection like when you're trying to find the dude is a little bit slow so and that just could be my internet in my life but just wait be patient and let it do its thing it only, it's about 60 seconds. By slow, I mean it's just not instantaneous, if you will, but definitely way easier. There's no humidity trapped in the dough, which obviously was an issue last time. Even mine that I ended up getting had some humidity in it, but if you guys have any issues with these dudes, if you choose to grab them, please reach out. Now, if you reach out in the comments, it's going to be even slower for me to get to you because the actual team that helps with the technical side and walking you through things is just a team of five but there's a website <laughs> and i'm gonna put the website link down below you can click that either to grab one of these or four just saying and then i'm also going to link down below for you to um you know send messages contact us if you do need help i can try to help you I can help you with the plant data and digesting it and if you have ideas on video ideas with plant data that you have collected with this please dm me on instagram facebook whatever i am going to be doing videos on the data and how to interpret it and really maximize the results of this device through using those statistics however when it comes to hooking this up to a phone especially a samsung <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not good at that. That's where I'm gonna need you to lean on Sid and Dan and all the other great guys on core over on the, at the Earth One team. We're a small team. We're not huge, but we are definitely here to help you and walk you guys through this. So now the pilot project helped us really gain a lot of feedback on what you didn't like and what you did like and make a ton of different changes. If you're a plant expert, I would say that initial pilot project wasn't necessarily the end all be all. However, this one, if you're a plant expert is, I mean, 
it's a game changer. Number one reason being that the actual soil moisture sensor on this is incredibly unique in the sense that it can sense not only when your plants need to be watered, but also when your plants need to be repotted. And I'm gonna do a separate video on looking at that data and how to determine when that time is near. Experts, you'll be able to learn from this as well. For example, when it comes to soil moisture, we look at soil porosity, why it matters, how it affects our plants, etc., and so forth, and what the different percentages on the soil moisture meter mean in regards to your soil solution landscape. On the other end, I'm using layman terms, and that can include things like bright and direct light, where it takes the light sensor value, gives you the number if you're a nerd, but then translates it into layman's terms of indirect, bright and direct, etc., and so forth light on the actual app itself. So it's going to be great for a beginner because it's using really basic t terminology, but as a beginner, you will soon become an expert because it's also using really scientific data and lingo and learning throughout the entire process. Now, if there's ever something in the app that you run into where you're like, I have no idea what this is talking about, most sections have a video at the bottom that I've done that tells you kind of the ins and outs of that specific sensor um, and what it's trying to tell you. Now, I'm gonna update those videos with more current info from specific to these, don't get me wrong, but in the meantime, they'll work just great. This plant sensor in the future is going to grow. So this is one product of many. We are already talking about things like ambient sensors. So for example, the light sensor, moisture sensor, etc., and so forth is all in this hub area and while this is great if you have a small plant, if you had something, for example, like a giant fiddly fig tree, it's not ideal because you're not getting top canopy readings. The other thing is if you have a plant room, the humidity around that plant under the canopy is much higher than what it is ambient room wise. So not that it's not inaccurate, it's incredibly accurate. It's just when you get into larger sized plants, the accuracy can vary from the top of the canopy to the bottom of the canopy. So our intent in the future is actually to have almost ecosystem or microclimate sensors that will sense humidity above, um, in the middle of, all around the canopy, including light, that sort of thing. So the future of this is endless. I mean, there's so many different possibilities you could have. I was joking with Sid and I said, we need to make a CO2 sensor to see how much carbon dioxide a house or a plant person's life actually takes out of the atmosphere. It was a joke, but Sid's like, yeah, no, I like that. So it's a really creative team and the future for this is just so incredibly bright. The app itself, what you're seeing is not the final product. We have the intention of actually updating this app forever and always. And one of those adaptations or future things coming out you can see on the website is actually coupling with like Google Homes and Alexas to give you plant status updates, which is really, really cool. And as a plant hoarder, which I'm sure most plant people who are, you know, really into the hobby are, knowing when to water a plant is huge because one of the number one ways in which my plants actually die in my house is under watering because of how busy I am and I just lose track of what needs to be watered etc and so forth which is how busy my lifestyle is so um, having that Alexa or that Google Home update I mean that would be pretty darn neat um, other than just the regular app. Ideas that I even have in regards to what you can do just with the soil, let alone the micro environment your plant is in is huge. For example, if you're able to bring a new plant home and scan it and that plethora of sensors you have would be able to tell you what room or area location in your home that plant is best suited to based on the data that these are collecting. I mean, take the guesswork out of it. Scientists use this all the time in agriculture, but to have this on a home scale, it's huge. So as a plant expert, I guess you could say, or someone who's heavily involved with plants, this is going to solve one major issue I have, 
and that is plant management. I know it sounds goofy, but it's very, very real. I have probably, if we included the outside plants with indoor plants, I have ballpark somewhere around probably 500 plants total and it can be really difficult to actually catch a plant before it goes downhill because of underwatering or maybe I overwatered and I left the nursery pot inside of an enclosed ceramic or maybe I moved a plant somewhere by accident and I took it out of the light that that plant needs to survive. These sensors help me manage a very large collection, a very expensive large collection at that, and have them thrive without me being stressed out about my plant care, which is huge. So in the summertime, obviously I'm gardening. I'm managing a garden in the city. I'm managing a garden out at the family farm. And then I also have my houseplants indoors and my houseplants indoors they do suffer this time of year because I just simply forget to water them. Well, when the app goes off and tells me to get my butt in gear, I now know. The other really fun thing is that it actually, I'll be able to use the data to determine when it's time to bump up that pot or uh, simply upsize the potting material that the plant is in. Now the reason for this is because I'll be able to see really sharp spikes and dips in the soil moisture and that will inform me when it's time to actually repot rather than using guessing to get there. So that is kind of cool. The other thing is as an expert <laughs> I really want to look good and present myself well in regards to plant care. So if I have a plant that's not growing, staying the same size, and my beautiful green room suddenly goes brown, that's not ideal. I always have to be gaining new growth. It boosts my confidence in talking to you about plants, and just overall, it's proof positive of my ability to garden. So this also <laughs> helps to expedite growth by really finding the Goldilocks zone inside of each plant in what they need. Now by Goldilocks zone, I mean that light, soil moisture, ambient humidity, all play into how that plant not only survives, but actually thrives. So if you have a plant that's continually growing slow, if you're able to keep your plant in the Goldilocks zone, I think you'd be really truly shocked by how quickly and uh, how the growth process is heavily expedited. So definitely something um, to look at there. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Go grab your dude to support me, the channel, this very small Canadian tech company, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!